Ganga PC wala kahi. He felt it. Yeah. That is the statement I get from seeing him and his team members staying for 4 saal, 5 saal in the company. It is not because of the money. Yeah. It is not also because of the great work they did. That work is fun. But work is never going to be fun if you always see a very top down culture. And this is, a, this, is a, this is an area where I have very strong views, crystallized over many years of seeing many companies, including mine. But it is a different issue. It is an issue of employee retention. Today's topic is about employee attraction. You cannot communicate a feeling of partnership when you are attracting an employee. So therefore, quote unquote, it is outside today's thing. On this note, on this note, suppose now we are limited cash. So we get an enabler, but we don't have enough money to, let's say, give the market salary, even the of the market salary. So we can come up with a cash plus equity model, give some equity, but still we are startup, the equity is still illiquid. They go, what do I you mean is the low value? My point is that if you are talking about partnership, are you willing to do like 25% equity? I know so many entrepreneurs who are so badly in need of money that their business is going down the tubes, but they will not tell you. This is the Indian culture. I am building a business for my grandchildren. That is the you Nobody ever builds a business for employees in the Indian culture. Other than some Narayan Murthys and some other companies, nobody in the Indian culture builds business for employees. Though the employees are the guys who sweat blood and everything else and ruin family lives is the foundation on which a successful company grows. Okay. In fact, uh, we came across one very interesting question. Basically, uh, what drives you? Why you are working without money? That is the same answer should come from the other person. Exactly. Why he will be interested in work with, uh, working with you? So, what you are finding attractive, that is the thing only you can sell. If you were earning money, you will also be ready to pay the other person. Right. But when you are not earning money, still you are going and working, right? Every right, right. You are stalking yourself. So what is that thing which is driving you? Sell that. You don't have money. There is no two per value of 2% or even maybe 10%. So How why do you want to sell, sell that? that without any... So you listen to You are saying that if we, I am running with a drive where I have not don't have the money and that and same drive without making me any partner or any stakeholder or any money also how is the drive going to No, the idea is not that you don't do that. Yes. How do you do not that? The idea is not that you don't do that. No, no, no. The idea is not that you don't make him a yeah. partner or a stakeholder. Yeah. Yeah. You have to do that. You, you have to do mixture of both. No, no, no. I, I have a problem with mixture of both. Mm. Because whenever I hear these terms, these hacking middle paths, the Buddha was great at pre preaching the middle path. Mm. Most of us are not. <laughs> yeah, when people talk about you have to do mixture of both, they mean Dota Kai today. Mm. I am repeatedly uh, bringing us back to this one question which we all need to look at. Can you walk the bloody talk? When you use the word partnership, are you willing to give the guy a minimum of 20% equity? Otherwise he's not a partner. He's a flunky who is being getting deferred, uh, you know, deferred remuneration in the form of some equity in lieu of salary. Or a promise for deferred remuneration. Yes. Promise for deferred remuneration. Exactly. That is my point. Not a deferred remuneration. We should be ready to give it. Ready said. I am not meaning two taka or that. I mean that wherever he says that if that guy is valued, say that is the missing link in your organization. That is the missing link. What say my guy, my something is a software is the missing link of mine, which I am not a technical person. If that is a missing link and I am finding that missing link, I should be willing to be that particular. I will, 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 Recruiting a person with 20% equity is not recruitment. It is a partnership. Mm -hmm. That is not okay. the issue. And you cannot grow a business by giving every new person 20% equity. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> no, no. so my point is that at some point, to come to your question and all the issues that all of us are talking about, the question is if you don't have enough money, you want to grow your business, is the answer reduce salary plus equity? My answer is no. My answer is go get money. Or change your business model a little bit so that you grow go for the next two years with three people team. But all three people have to eat well. 
that doesn't mean they'll be rich. There is a uh, there is a term in Bengali which translates to he will be in cloth and rice. So cloth and rice are made. So that it, 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 there should be enough money floating around for all the members to take enough money home to be in cloth and rice. So wo chahiye. Tab tak agar usse yada agar paisa nahi hai, don't grow your business, change your business model. Why do you think a company like me is doing software services? The only reason is software services allows me by changing my business model to get some cash flow in so that I can put it so that I can do interesting things also and that's a separate division. Today my divisions in my company are so watertight that there is no migration of people from the software services division to product division and vice versa. So I'm actually running two businesses under one brand. I will be creating separate brands for them, trademarking separate logos. That is a part of the process. But the important thing is, it's very clear that if you don't have money, go get money. Or you change your business model to earn money by just go hamali gidi karo. No, do software services, do consulting. Go to go sit with a briefcase in your customer's office and do consulting for the customer. For the first uh, one year of my company's business, we didn't have an office. For the first two years of my company's business, we didn't have an office. How did the company, we had like four, five people. How did the company run? It ran by meeting once a week for dinner at a good hotel. Other six, six days, we were at customer side. Paisa nahi hai, lekin kama ke khate hai. And my customers at that time included ICICI, Reliance Industries, which is in Blue by Zira, Make a Chamber 4, and Indian Express Newspapers Group, and a few others. Some of the best customers, some of the biggest brand customers you can imagine. Sab kuch kar sakte ho, paisa nahi hai, toh bhi. Change your business model. But you have to be in clock and dance. So can he aggregate, aggregate? Say, two, three log hai, so how can he manage the both sides of the world? You have product development team, product. I didn't have products at that time. My products evolved out of the work I did in service. What is that? Simple, you have to have some product in your every domain. You have to have some product in your every domain. Selling one, this is much better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, I don't know whether my business would even have started if I had kept on trying to do for funds rather than doing something. Today I do, I do something and I have some customers who swear by me. I have some customers who have given me continuous business for more than 10 years. Har saal billing hua hai, 10 saal se jada tha. Uska kuch to kima tha, kuch to hamne sikha hai. But if I look at all the mistakes I have made, one of the biggest mistakes I have made is I have not taken care of cash reserves to an adequate extent for me to do my business in a way in which it would have been easier. So I don't know what is right, you know, whether I should have actually hold, held on to this and delayed my business or whether I should have focused on this and it would have made a better business, more powerful business, I don't know. So it's kind of job name with that. But uh, this, this is the kind of stuff that keeps me away. Right even that fact remains, fact remains that, you know, even, even if I take your example about, you know, that you want to do something and you still have to generate cash. You know, when I started off, I had two customers in Bombay. One was GTL, so very close by, it was a big company then, bigger than what it is today. GTL? GTL. Other than the first. And the other, other was KPMG. So what I used to do, I both to my customers, I had no office, and I had the three people that I had hired. All the three of them were supposed to work on the product that we were doing. So I used to do consulting for KPMJ, which was morning 8 till 2 o'clock. After 2 o'clock, I would come to GTL. GTL was kind enough to give us space because we were, I was doing consulting for them as well. So they said, I will give you space for three people to uh, sit. So I would come here. So they would have done some work in the morning. I would do all of that. They will continue working till uh, 8 in the night. And then I would uh, go back to Lady West. So that's how I would manage. So the cash flow was insured, which was coming from my first customer, which is KPMJ. The space was provided by this guy. 
and we were doing some work for GT, but not, not great work by then. I mean, the work was supposed to start a little later. But since, since you have so much of space, why don't you give it a look? I enough to do that. And I think if you go and ask your customer, they, no one says no to you. If the customer has enough trust to give you lakhs worth of order, he will say, not say no to a small space that you ask for. So I think you just simply have to go and ask, and you get your uh, way around. So we, we so for, for, for one and a half year, for one and a half year, I did not have an office in Mumbai. Same story as My team was sitting in GTL, I used to sit in uh, KPMG. In KPMG, I had an extension number as well, which was printed on my card. A mobile number and a direct number, which I could reach. I mean, simply because they had given me orders worth back to rupees, so I'm sure you know they could afford this. For them, they got uh, 300 desk space, and they space, they could have a nothing. So basically on the issue of salary, I suggest that if you have a startup problem, you look at a services model, start selling your time, and start selling the time of your initial team, until you get external funding to be able to change your business model. Till that time, just sell time. T and M pe apne aap ko laga do. You know, you become a, whatever, a, a, a time selling entity. And uh, that's what I did. I, my first employee is still with me today. Uh, he joined about four months after I started my business. When I asked him to join, by that time I had enough indicators from these customers that they would be willing to pay for a number two person also. So I was a solo one man show. I got a number two. He also started billing for his time. We were actually steadily and completely profitable in those first two years. Right through from day one itself, we were profitable. it was very dicey. But after that, I was I was doing uh, you know monthly retainership consulting billing, and I was. And so I grew the team to from two to four. I was profitable. I grew. After the second year, I grew. I ramped up to around eight, twelve. That ownership thing, like you were mentioning, like people still found you that after 12 years you were leaving, I said, Oh, you, this is your own company. So, how does that come? I understand now we are here for attracting people, but that is also a very crucial part without giving stake and all. See, it didn't come in, no one told me that you are, you feel like yeah. an owner. I was no, made you like like feel like an owner by no. given the independence to do what I would do. I think I mean, I, 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 I decided, I mean, one day I decided, this is a gap which I figured out in the market, we should do a product. I said, okay, go ahead and justify why you would do that. I went ahead, made a justification, said, okay, for next one week you are not expected to be in office. Go take your time, justify it. If you, one week is not sufficient, stay back, but come back and tell me why you want to do that. I went back and I did that in the company, started a new product line, just because I said it. I mean, so, 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 so there, there are a whole lot of things, it's just one small incident which I am telling you, right? There are a whole lot of things you know, which happen over a period of time, which gives you sufficient uh, responsibility, it gives you the independence to uh, execute. At the same point in time, uh, you know, you are accountable for what you are doing. If you find an enabler in your company, but you join just one month back, how do you tell the footholders that now it will be your senior? You know, that's not like another issue. Or you, you tell the footholders in plain English, footholders in plain English. Okay. This guy is better than me, he, he will be. If that foot soldier is a professional, he will accept it. If he isn't, he will leave, which is good for me. Yeah. So I would like to share my experience. Uh, see what I've been doing. Because of the PWC and management jargon, we small companies we start using you know high frontal languages. Mm -hmm. Oh vision hai like I think you know if some guy is ready to you know work with you with two percent equity, he is not an enabler. He's a fool he doesn't understand he's getting into a trap. Right. A smart guy would you know not do that. We we also offer these things and one fine day I realize you know we are you know blowing a big balloon, nothing is happening and we you know if the Banya language was हमको प्रॉफिट चाहिए तुम प्रॉफिट लाएगा तो इतना उसमें से सेल प्राइस का इतना तुम्हारा स्टेक है तुम्हारा डिवीजन का खर्चा इतना प्लेन इंग्लिश में फ्रॉम दैट डे ऑनवर्ड्स यू नो वी बोथ 
So everybody became at the same level. Although we increased the salaries, but our profitability improved even more. Because those people then understood that now you know, we are at the same level. He is talking the language which is accepted in the market, which is what happens in day to day life. Oh, see, you don't get cheaper employees. But you know, if you are honest, probably you can get employees at a competitive rate. Yes. A cheaper thing never works. People may who differ in that. So like, oh, engineer, I go, you don't have a job, you don't have a job, you don't have a job. So we, one, go, I guess I interviewed one candidate from an engineering college. I said, you were in 2011, I was passed out. What was I doing now? I was doing it now, I was doing it last month, my father made a pocket money. I have a tip to you for this. I feel there are many intelligent people out there who have been, because of, like what is that can't speak English, you can't type, type, you're being deaf by the big companies. So you should look on to those people. You look for the polish rather for the English. If you're honest, you get people at competence. It's not about the money. It's never 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 about the money. Anyway, we are a very rich company. Funds are not a problem at all for us, but we face all the problems. And we see, because money is never a problem, because the parent company is very rich. So, we see other problems like, so it's never about the money. There are no questions about the money. You pay them the best. You pay one lakh, pay two lakhs, pay ten lakhs. He's paying one lakh, you get him on two lakhs. If he has to... Ultimately, you should get return. If you are honest, you get return. No, you try and do the pricing, you can buy equity, you can buy partner, you can buy it. You can buy it. At the end of the day, you don't have to show the balance. You don't have to show the cost. So, you know that... That's not possible. Those who get fooled by such things are not going to drive a company to next level. When my observation experience is very very clear. Smart Admi Hoga, who will take your company to the next level, but still you have to be truthful. You cannot fool around with them. And uh, another one small point about recruitment, the recruitment story that I uh, missed out was uh, you have to be, you have to budget for mistakes in recruitment. This means that the recruitment challenge is that you know if you are looking for a senior guy, you probably have to budget for three recruitments. The third one will be right. Mm -hmm. It's very expensive, yeah. but I don't know of a way to eliminate the mistakes. I, uh, in my understanding, even large and mature companies are continuously making mistakes, and I think the thing they do well is that they let go fast. Yeah, let go. Oh, you say the skill, skill against attitude. When you recruit a person, do you give to skill and attitude? Right? That depends on the role. In certain roles, skill is everything. Mm -hmm. He can have the worst attitude, but his skill is so valuable mm -hmm. as a super specialist that I will work with him. Mm -hmm. And in most other cases, it's circumstantial. It, no, it's different. It's role dependent. Role or circumstantial. It's role dependent. Mm -hmm. Sorry about being fussy about choice. <laughs> <laughs> The, uh, and also attitude is a bigger issue for people who will stay longer. So you have to be careful about attitude when you are looking at a person as somebody who will need to stay for five years to add value. So suppose you are recruiting somebody who is like a GM and who you know will only be useful if he can work for a few years and become VP. Then attitude is very important. If you are hiring a junior programmer who you know will leave in less than two years. Then attitude is not that important. So you look at the road and you decide. But company culture is extremely important. Extremely important. Therefore, uh, attitude of individual employees aggregates to define company culture. Therefore, you have to pay attention to the attitude of people. And you can ignore attitude only for those people who you are sure will be in roles which will not damage the company culture. So sometimes some companies have many people in such roles where their attitudes don't really affect the company culture. If you have such roles, then you can afford to ignore the attitudes of those people. But otherwise, if a guy is going to stay for at least a couple of years, if the guy is going to influence other people, if he's going to get in touch, if he's going to be put in contact with juniors so that he'll influence the juniors, then attitude becomes very important. 
Why clearly, and then we walked in. You said that just like all this room is like messy and all that. It's very good. So I don't know. Whenever you go to a U.S. company or you go to a very good company in India, also some things are very spick and span. It leaves an impression on you, and you get intimidated by that. Like you go to a government office, so instantly you your hand goes in the pocket because everything things are thrown, up. and everywhere you don't know where the file is. The beauty is everything, and. You know, you know, you know instantly that you have to do something out of the pocket, and then only the work will done. It's a speed money, maybe like three years also very honest. But sometimes you have to do it now, and you are helpless, and the guy won't do it for ten days. So, so like when these type of things, when you see somewhere, you don't you get you know feel that okay, it's sloppy and the work is going on. No, see the Nanda PC example that I keep mm -hmm. uh, having PCs. Partly disassembled and lying on certain tables mm. would make the office space look messy. Mm. But it attracts exactly the kind of people I wanted. Mm. I wanted. I wanted guys who would get uh, you know excited seeing uh, people getting their hands dirty. So I there think is something PC, but there is something like this. Why is not going to attract anybody? Lying loose. Yes, it does. It doesn't does attract anybody, but it makes a subtle statement that this company is an unpretentious. Uh, you know, casual company where youngsters can work without feeling intimidated. They don't always have to be on their best behavior. So this is only one part of the story. This right. has to be associated with the behavior of the people they meet, etc., etc. If people are forthcoming, casual, hi, I'm so and so, and if the CEO comes out, extends his hand, hi, I'm so and so, and you're on first name terms, and you know he stands around talking to you, he doesn't take you to a Conference room and everybody sits properly, etc. They sort of stand around, walk around, chat. They give chai and coffee. They call chai chai, not tea. Okay, so you get a general set of signals that this is a relaxed, informal, cool place. I'm among friends. You don't know anything more, but at least you know this is. Okay, that to chalta hai. To mere kaam karna padega, lekin baaki to chalta hai. So it might attract the right kind of people. And there are many industries, especially the. Uh, smaller companies who are trying to grow, I think, often need to give that kind of a message because those are the people who will be willing to work in a poorer company. Right? Mm -hmm. Those who value the coolness and the informality more than the money and the show of luxury. Those are the people you want in a smaller company. So, isn't it that typically I have seen that the personality of founder defines a lot about what kind of people he is able to attract. Absolutely true, but then you know, in that case, the founder has to be personally involved in every employment interview. So, what at least the startup stage, I guess they would be need. They will. They, they, they startup will. stage, so they will. Be. But you know, need. what happens in a company like ours? At least we have reached now so 80, 85 people. Right? So now, about 80 percent of the recruitments don't involve me, and I have very clearly said there are certain two or three profiles where nothing will go through unless I meet the guy. I have better power. Other 80 percent profiles. Are going through without me. It's not that there aren't senior people doing the recruitment. They are they're trusted senior people who are doing recruitment, but it's not a problem. It's not even Shraddha. Shraddha is today a part of the core team. Sometimes there are recruitment that goes through without them. So that is the issue, basically. When you go a little bigger, you need to have certain other things in place where the founder's personality may not be available. Excuse me. <coughs> you read an issue about attitude. Uh, there was a discussion on skills and attitude. Uh, what I am seeing a lot in the discussion here is that uh, to some extent it's defining who you actually need which is becoming an issue. Uh, getting into an interview, seeing that you know a person is uh, let's say more like the uh, promoter or the entrepreneur rather than very clearly defining in terms of uh, the modern techniques which are the scientific techniques, what are the competencies which are required of the individual in terms of skill competency, that is the knowledge, and in terms of the behavioral or the leadership competency that is required. So very clearly being able to define the job role and using that job role to be able to define what are those skill sets and competencies required. That I think to a large extent will uh, make the job much more easier and something like you know attitude which is more a generic description 
will then not enter into the picture because uh, it will be a definition in terms of specific competencies. And your interviews can be done on that basis. Recruitment can be done on that basis. Your uh, filtering can be done on that basis. There are online tests which can be done, psychometric tests, uh, behavioral interviews which specifically target questions based on those specific competencies which have been identified. So uh, I thought, you know, just something like attitude and all, this gives a more scientific basis to recruit people. I am unclear and unconvinced about it. I am not saying I don't agree. Uh, each of us has our own uh, perspective, I am sure. I am unconvinced about it because I have not seen anybody talk the language you speak come down to the level of a small and chaotic company and bring in that structuring into the ground reality of such a company. I find slightly more mature companies, you know, manufacturing may 100 crore rupees, services may some 50 crore rupees, trading may a few hundred crore rupees. If, if the company reaches that size, then the company is already mature enough for the you know, in biology we learn single cell differentiation, so cell differentiation talks about more evolved uh, species, right? So organizations also evolve. So as they evolve, as they mature, the differentiation becomes more clear. So I think a little more evolved organizations will probably be able, will certainly be able to benefit from what you are saying. I have no doubt about the value of those ideas and processes in such companies, but I am not sure, I am unconvinced about their value enough. You know? Smaller company, you know, even an eighty percent company. I have, uh, but eighty percent is tiny by Indian software industry standards, but it is uh, bigger than what we were a few years ago. Even there, I find about fifty percent of my employees are in software services. That team, I can evaluate very scientifically and quite impersonally using certain set of tests. What about the rest? So that is my feeling, you know. I have reached a point now where only the junior levels of my predictable division, the software services division, I can handle in a more structured way. In fact, I will share uh, my business is I run a HR software company and I do provide performance management solution to larger corporates. Uh, and I have two part of business. One part of business which provides uh, which caters to larger company and 10,000 10, employees and upwards, and the other part which is smaller company, 100 to 500 employees. I, I mean, I would want to believe that a scientific scientific method would be very very helpful. Unfortunately, in this scenario, and yet to find a company which has very clearly defined job roles and job positions, even if it is a 10,000 employee company, at the senior management level. What they have it is at the lower level, not even at the middle management level. At the lower level, they are very clearly defined. So if you are a sales guy, this is what you do. If you are a manufacturing guy, this is what you do. You are a maintenance guy, this is what you do. Very clearly defined. But as soon as you go to the managerial level, the job roles are not defined. No one has even identified the competencies. I mean, I don't want to take the names, but I'm working with some of the bigger brands in Indian industry today. Unfortunately, I don't see many of them having done that exercise for larger companies, and which is one of the reasons why I follow the same bracket that I would want to believe that this would work because it's scientific I and mean, it must work. But I have not seen people actually applying that practically. And which is what my uh, well, you know, that little skepticism is on this. But that's the opportunity. You haven't seen it being applied. Which means that's the opportunity. And that's the opportunity and that's the space that uh, you know some of us are there. So it's, it's just that it's, it's become very mature in Europe and in the US. But it just hasn't become mature here. And that is the... Uh, I have a question in the Nepal pool during the start of phase. You know, where do you get this kind of, you know, when you're starting up your, you know, 
single person on the ground, you know, because I can share my experience when I started off after quitting my job. You know, the first uh, interview I did only in a coffee shop, because I did have an office. You know, the office was under, uh, you know, the interior guys were taking over and, you know, we have the office. And speak to a report program because I don't have an HR guy. You know, I can be finding out who's the person who's the first one on the interview on the phone, call them for the interview, and then I only meet them for an interview. So I need still somebody. So you go and tie up the uh, HR consultant who starts lining up people because that's the first round of an outsource HR activity, what I think was the uh, app. The HR guy refused to say that, you know, I won't be able to line up in the time you don't have a website and an office in place. That's the first <laughs> hurdle which you face. And then you start running around and say that at least, you know, get a static, you know, 10 page website ready, at least, you know, people know that. You are existing. You know, uh, have an office address at least so that people know there is an office. And since it's under renovation, you know, we are meeting up in a coffee shop. So, you know, when you get this kind of, you know, uh, the process, or you have a uh, in the in the startup phase, the goals are so fluid that you know you want like it's a P two P. Like everybody has to be a P and everybody has to be acting acting as a president to you know work like a uh, take decisions at time when when it is required. You know, it's a firefighting situation. Day in, day out. You know, obviously, uh, three years, two years down the line, you want to ensure that you set processes so that you don't really, you know, get that kind of situation. And you have owners for taking up that decision. So you know, you know that who's the responsible person for taking that decision if there's a situation like that. But in the initial phase, you would want everybody to act like a president and take a decision if you know the the president is not available. So it's a P to P. So if the pure is not available, I act as a pure and go and take my own coffee, tea, you know, clean up my desk or whatever. So it's it's required to do it. It's required. So where do you get the you know uh, get organized or is it viable? Is the question uh, to get organized uh, in the startup phase in your first six months to one year when you are actually looking out to hire people? You have a you know, a uh, fair idea of what you're expecting when you're hiring for certain roles. But I don't know whether you'll be able to, and uh, in my case, you know, I, I got into a business which I've never done. I, I, I got into training, I've never done training in my life. I, I was always a salesperson. I was always on the uh, banking and operations, uh, on the uh, sales front, on the BPO side. I've never been into training operations, neither I've been into it. So for me, for me also it was a learning. So, you know, understanding and I think those interviews also taught me a lot of stuff when you actually meet up people from industry, they come and tell you that how you should run your business, you know, though, though you learn that uh, from them. But the question here is that, is it viable to set the process beforehand, you know, you start a business? Or is it an, you know, evolving process? Which process? I'm talking about, you know, as you mentioned earlier, you should have your job descriptions defined, the psychometry. In my opinion, don't you, you think know, about it when you are uh, in a startup phase? Right? It's, it's not possible. It's, it's just it may be possible, possible, but I don't need to have a lot of deep pockets to really ensure that, you know, you. No, it's not about depth of pockets. It's about anything that you try to freeze at that point would probably be a mistake. Yeah, you discovered the next thing, it changed. It would change. It so, changed. better to just run with the flow. Yeah. I would do some. I would do some basic things like uh, the physical infrastructure is easy to take care of. You know, you were mentioning coffee shop. When I started, there were no coffee shops. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so some of these things have become easier. Yeah, yeah. So uh, get a cabin in a business center. And uh, I think you need to recruit initially at the zero stage, you need to recruit from top down, not yeah. bottom up, right? It's so always. So you recruit one or two people at the time. Have the business area no, really. And then you recruit, if your business center is taking care of housekeeping, fine. Otherwise you recruit a peon. The peon is, I think, a necessary part of the framework of running a business in, in, in India. Yeah. You empty a peon to it. So oh, that's, well, believe me, it's a big challenge to get right side of people to really work uh, yes. and on it. Yes. Because you know, you're actually leaving your office open. Yes. You know, generally peons are honest. I don't know. But as I have seen, yes. we don't have the most honest people and I have read about a company, I forgetting about it, when, when we kick out, out the chairman, we had a sweeper. Huh? This is a company where a sweeper became the chairman of the company. It's a very big company in the US, of course. So we actually, you know, we don't utilize the views, I think. Very good views and you get, I, you have to have an eye for multitasking also. Yeah. They can yeah. multitasking. Yeah. They are also. I've seen tremendous, uh, like, uh, you know, value from very low repaid people. I don't know. But take care of them. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, basically, you 
we set up that infrastructure, a little bit of an office as in a cabin or a cubicle in a shared business sector and of the own. Then you can start recruiting your first one or two guys. That will be totally your one on one, you know. Yeah. And uh, a lot of our recruitment, even today, at senior levels, doesn't happen in our office. It happens wherever the candidate is comfortable. Mm -hmm. So if the com candidate works in Lower Padil, I work in Mahapi. I insist on one interview in our office. So that he, he gets to know, gets to know what the office looks like. like. Otherwise, we just travel down to meet a candidate, mm -hmm. wherever it is. So we meet the person there. and. Uh, Check. So that process is uh, and at that stage when you are at that what I call level zero, at, le at level zero stage I think uh, you go for interpersonal fit more than anything else. You know guys have to work together and they have to be comfortable with the chaos. Because at that level there is really nothing other than chaos on the table, right? You have some customers, you have some business, you don't really know three months later what your business will be. Right. And it is most important that you say it upfront and that guy is comfortable with it upfront. You know that your profile, if you say it's on a profile, they are the best when it comes to handling this thing on their future. And techies are the very worst. <laughs> okay, I am a techie, okay? I have a master's in computer science from one of the best colleges in India. This techie thing is in my blood. I am telling you. It is a, such a drawback. <laughs> I want to structure everything. I want to put everything into some structure. And okay, but you have to be on your feet. Okay, you have to. You have to be. You know. Oh, I, I used to. When I was in storytelling mood, I used to tell this to some of my junior colleagues. He, my first few months, you know, I have spent many minutes, many hours, standing in doorways in Fort area of Bombay, holding my briefcase in my hand because I can't walk because it's raining. That is what you know. You are in a zameen pe khade ho, office to hai nahi. Par yaha se kahi wahan jana hai. Jab barish bandh hoogi tab jaoge. Gaari ka to sawal hai nahi. So that is where you are on that day one. That's level zero. Okay. You have to have a couple of people who are comfortable doing that. Doing that. You know the only zameen you have is below your feet. And, and so that time kya structure, kya no, job description. No, maybe the next question might not be relevant to today's topic. You get such people who are ready to be part of your chaos and, and you know, then you realize over a period of six months or, you know, I, you know, I don't know whether six months is the right time or one day is the right time or what's that right time or period to really decide whether the fitment was right or wrong. The fitment happened on the first day only. I have had people and the person, is, sometimes you are so comfortable with that person, in second day you can do outsource. No, you are very comfortable with the person. No, only that is about from an aptitude point of view. Yeah. When I talk about fit pain, yeah. it is not about the attitude. Yeah. It is about the aptitude. Hmm. And that's where I come to the fit pain. And you know, and that's where you know, that's the hard call which probably, probably I feel that you know, it's important and you know, probably as I said that it's not relevant to today's, it's not about recruitment. But you know, still it's related to wrong recruitment uh, at the first place. But you know, how do you, What's the right time to decide that now it's enough? I, I, I don't know, uh, that's one. Second, what is the right methodology of you know actually recruiting a right resource? Because as you rightly said that you should be prepared for the mistakes. And you know, three, uh, one out of three is going to be on the right person. And it probably is, is, is the uh, fact of, uh, because you know, in that uh, 30 minutes or 45 minutes or one hour of interview or you know, as we have a process that he has to go through three rounds of interview. So at least we have multiple views on that person. So you know, you don't really have any you know unilateral decision making. That मुझे इसकी शक्ल अच्छी लगे तो मैं इसको हायर करूँ. It's it's not like that. So you deal with it. Absolutely. So you you try and make everybody go through it, and everybody has his view, and you do it. But still, at times you make a mistake. At course. At times you know uh, you you end up hiring a wrong person. We have actually stopped uh, criticizing ourselves. We used to castigate ourselves after the mistakes. We have stopped doing that. We have said that this, this is the process. This no, is the Edison ka statement tha na? Yeah. 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 Inventing the light bulb is right. a 301 yeah. step process. Yeah. As in 300 failures. Keep looking for the right people. You get the person on board, trying off and you see and then the then then this is the going to be the uh, So to come to your question, you know, this startup phase may you get a few people who join you with whom you can work together. Uh, what happens about attitude? In my opinion, that's an extremely insightful and 
valuable question. And I'm surprised it's coming from anybody who's at a startup phase. Maybe all of this we have learned only in hindsight. I admire uh, the person who can see this problem. Uh, startups usually start with a small team, that initial code team. Yeah, the code team. Code team team. Initial code team. Yeah, galti mein <laughs> initial code team. Initial code team, not the code team. That will, that will last with you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, every major uh, my, uh, phase in your company, you probably have to change your code team. Yeah. So, startup starts with an initial code team, which is basically your old acquaintances. People you worked with in your last job, you know, before you resigned and started your firm. My uh, core team member at that time was also people who I worked with in the past. So you know them, they know you, they trust you 100%. See, on matters like money, 100% trust is required. Yeah. So they know you, they trust you. So, and you have some confidence that you can do it. You personal equation to do it. You have had dinners together, multiple dinners together. So, you can do it. You can do it. You know. So, you can do it. So, you can do it. They don't necessarily all grow at the same pace. Mm. Your company's growth depends upon your core team growth. Mm. You know, in headroom, in terms of mental power mental, and yeah, maturity, absolutely, absolutely. everybody will not grow at the same pace. So it is an absolutely well understood problem among angel investors, VC funds, etc. Ye naya company ka jo core team hota hai, usme thodi der baad, do char saal baad, jaake serious divisions shuru ho jaate. So being able to recognize and accept and let go of your core team members, initial core team members, is a part of the process of growing to the next level. And it is always a dicey process. It is sometimes very confrontational, very distasteful and uh, violent, as in real arguments all that happens. But to, with a certain amount of maturity and certain amount of patience, often you can slowly make the person understand because to company may rise, like there are role changes. I have been through one such process. Because we are in that process of so I'm just trying to get that, you know. Am I taking that decision too fast or you know? There is no time uh, to that. Purpose. You know, I, I, I don't think you can't you can't do too much about it. Huh. Because uh, it's anyway not in your hand. Because whether the person will be really fit or not will depend on what your business will be one year down the exactly. line. You don't know <laughs> anyway right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so, yeah. I mean, if, if I think this it matches at the cerebral level, I think you should go ahead. As long as the guy is ready to flow with you, go ahead. business mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Based on that, you know, he might be suitable, might not be suitable. You know, my question is like one year down the line. I, I, I'm fine with that in an initial part when you hire that person. Correct. So, you know, I'm saying that you know, But one year down the line is the problem is you don't even know where you would know. Right? I mean, all, all, all I would say is that, you know, in all fairness, whether or not he's suitable for that role, you have to be fair to the guy because yeah. he trusted you. Exactly. You know, so you have to be fair yeah. to the guy. I, I had a situation where actually I had to outplace that person because he simply did not fit into what my company were into. I mean, we started off somewhere and went into somewhere else. He did not fit into it. So we had a heart to heart chat, and like he said, you know, if that trust factor is there, correct? We had a heart to heart chat. We realized, and he realized that you know there are other people who would have to supersede him. He wouldn't like that happening because everyone looked up to him but the fact is that you know, he didn't fit into that skill. But finally, I had enough enough context to ensure that you know he goes into the right position based on his skill. He was happy. He's a no, good friend. That's a, that's a very uh, uh, you know, right situation to be in where a person really understands that these are my gaps yeah. Yeah. and I am I'm not really you, know, you have to I think work on that. Don't yeah. you understand that over oh, right. time? It does not dawn one night that you, know, yeah. you have to work on use the word, you know, aptitude. You know, for a person who you know you really need to have that aptitude to understand my own gas. For me, you know, you know, like that you should trust is there. While we are on the broad subject of people, one of the things I've understood, one of the things I'd like to share is that there's a very important thing I've understood in the last couple of years. People don't understand their own gaps. You can't mm -hmm. hope to explain to people. See, there is all this stuff that I used to believe in, and I used to practice with all my heart about 
communicating with your colleagues honestly about their performance, about the work they are doing, about the demands of their role, and showing them uh, what is needed, what uh, they are delivering, where the gap is, how they can bridge it, etc. I am also able to only see so much, so I am doing it to the best of my ability, best of my clarity, but I am doing it. And I can see that I am able to see more than what he can see. And I used to believe that if I, if I can see more than what he can see, and if we have a basically honest working relationship, if I communicate over and over again, he will be able to learn, he will be able to see the gap, and then that will start the process of his growth. Doesn't work. I have understood one thing, that exceptional are those people who can grow. The one thing that people don't want to do is change. Because change involves getting stepping out of the comfort zone. Comfort zone, absolutely. You, and you the on. most important factor that determines the growth of a company is the extent to which the company's core team is willing to change, change themselves. Absolutely. Okay, so the bottleneck is always inside, not outside. Okay, it's not competitors who run you out of business. Yeah, you so the existing team who so, are probably so the your growth. So if you understand this, then you understand this. See, the difference between core team and the rest of your employees is that the, employees, the rest of the employees are not as willing to change as you are. So don't spend too much time hmm. trying to explain to a guy where he is getting stuck. At some point, just say, ki, when after making a few rounds of honest explanation, beyond a certain point, you have to say that ye jam raha hai. And at that point, when you say it, you have to be prepared for the fact that the guy is giving you that awful, incomprehend, in, well, you know, uncomprehending stare, which tells you that he is not quite understanding why you are saying this. He is giving the company everything. Why the hell are you saying this? This is his mm. feeling. This is his feeling, you can read it in his eyes. Be prepared for it. Mm. And still go ahead and say, I think we have tried enough. Let us change your position or your role so that you do what you do best or you move out of it. You can't explain to people their gaps. That's the worst nightmare. When a guy realizes he is not good enough for something, is his worst nightmare. He doesn't want that nightmare. No one wants to face the reality. That's, no. a, that's a fact of life. That you don't want to face the truth. So you want to live in our own world of. Uh, you know, we recently, about a year ago, we recruited somebody. March, we joined him. A year ago, we recruited somebody in a very senior position. Uh, that, that person was easily earning more than anybody else in the company. Much more salary than me or uh, Shraddha. Within six months, we knew we were not going to leave. So she joined in March. We told her in November. This is not good. But if we had many attempts at making things work. We shifted her around three times from into three different positions. Then we concluded, nahi hona. But if we can't incur that salary bill for a person who is delivering this little in our company. So we communicated this in November by January she had found another job at probably a slightly higher salary than what we were being and she has moved up and the communication, interaction, baat were very cordial. But I am 100% certain she has no clue why she couldn't deliver. Till the last day when we, the, till the last interview or last chat we had, with I and she had a chat sitting in a cabin without any third person present, till that last chat also. She made statements to show why she didn't do X or why she didn't do Y, which to my eyes were so absurd that any fool would have been able to see that you can't believe this is true. You know, it is very obvious that the explanation you're giving is not true. It has to be something that you couldn't deliver. So that person couldn't see it. And I didn't say this. I heard her explanations. I let her be. The important thing is to just accept people as they are and let them go. Jama to bahut badhiya. You know, upar wala ka blessing sahi ki wo jam Nahi jama, to don't try to improve society. It's very important. I think we have to close. Thanks for show. Thank you very much. Thanks for to all of you. I was just, you know, fighting. Thank you very much. Thank you.
فينيش فينيش هنا تعود انت كده زعجة واحد